Hello, amazing business owners. Welcome back to another episode of Bold with Brooke, the podcast and place to be to actually make a living doing what you love. I am so excited to be back. As you can hear, my voice is not quite at 100%, but it is far better than it was. I am super excited that you get to hear today's episode because after it was recorded, I lost one of my team members and the podcast process suffered a little bit. I lost two recordings entirely. And when I was going back through all my backups, I'm super excited to tell you that I found one of them. And that is today's episode. So it is a little bit of a throwback, but it has never been published before. And we are going to talk all about marketing, about aligned marketing and authentic marketing. And what the hell does that look like? And should you be doing the things that everyone says you should be doing in marketing, even if you hate them? So let's listen in. I did want to make a little note that anytime you hear the words business straight up, just know, the name has changed. So if you hear any links that are businessstraightup.com, you can still use them, but the updated link is boldwithbrook.com. Let's listen in. Hello, amazing business owners. Welcome back to another episode of Business Straight Up with Brooke Summer, the podcast to be at, to listen to, to embrace. If you want to be a creative business owner and actually make a living, doing what you love because the cliche of the starving artist needs to be kicked to the curb, right? (laughs) I know I always say that. I used to say can suck it and some people were like, I don't like that. Whatever. It's okay. Either way it needs to go. I am so excited for today's conversation. It is all about something that I love. We are going to talk about marketing. What the hell do I do to build a marketing strategy? What does that look like? How do I get all of these moving pieces in place so that it's something that's manageable and will not completely take over my life? All of these things are included in today's episode, and I cannot wait for you to hear the interview with Caitlin Pyatt. She runs Authentic Branding, and we're going to talk about what being authentic actually means because that is not just a buzzword. It is something we need to actually pay attention attention to, right? So I am super excited to get into today's episode. As always, if you have any questions, just reach out in the community at businessstraightup.com slash community. You can also reach out on Instagram at businessstraightup. That is all one word. And yes, there are three S's in the middle after business and starting straight. Some people get confused on that. So look me up on Instagram. Come join the community. Let's have a conversation. I would love to help you with your marketing, with anything you need help in in your business. If I can't figure it out, I know I have a resource for someone who can. So reach out, ask for help. The answer to any unasked question is always no. It can never hurt to ask. I cannot wait for you to hear today's episode. Let's dive right in. Hello there, gorgeous business owners. Welcome to Bold with Brooke, the podcast for creative business owners to learn the marketing and business skills they need to get more clients and design their lives on their terms so we can actually make a living doing what we love. Am I right? (laughs) I am your host, Brooke Summer, and I'm an entrepreneur, educator, and champion of women reminding them to embrace and step into their power. I'm bringing almost 20 years of business and marketing experience straight to you to help you get more clients and run a sustainable and successful business without burnout or overwhelm. Let's jump into today's topic. Welcome back, amazing business owners. I am so excited to have you here today. Any business owners, photographers, creatives, anyone that actually wants to make a living doing what they love, it is time for the cliche of the starving artist to get kicked to the curb, right? Today's guest is a brilliant marketing expert who is a professionally certified marketer, a new business owner, and a mom of three. Caitlin Pyatt and I have talked previously about marketing and the things we see, the things we don't see enough of, and I'm so excited to have her here today. Thank you so much for joining me, Caitlin. Yes. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So what has brought you kind of to where you're at? Tell me more about your story and what your journey has looked like so far. 
Sure. Well, I spent 12 years in corporate marketing and most of that time was focused in marketing management, creating marketing strategies. I worked at a financial institution, um, creating those marketing strategies, working directly with the CMO to create brand strategies and then focus on marketing management. And it was really fortunate while I was there, they were a great organization that supported um, a lot of continuing education. So that's where I got all of my continuing education things so that professional certification in marketing management. I have certifications from Cornell University in business strategy and marketing analytics um, and just really had this amazing run um, in the corporate world doing marketing. And I, I absolutely love marketing, but I was kind of getting to the point where I knew I wanted to make some kind of change. I didn't know what it was. I just knew I didn't want to be um, kind of stuck in this like rat race of going to a nine to five and only being able to take time off and like travel and go see my family and do things with my kids. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. With someone else's permission. Yes. Um, and I, so I started kind of thinking about like, what would this change look like? And I really had no idea. And thought it was going to be just a new job, something different. I had been in the financial world for probably eight, almost eight years at that time. And was like, I really just, I don't know. I don't want to do financial marketing anymore. Like I just want a new challenge and worked with a business coach. And I actually contacted him thinking he was going to help me find a new job. And he was like, you know, I think you would really love running your own business. And my husband was like, finally, (laughs) he had been begging me for a really long time. And, um, so we decided to kind of take that leap. We started saving. I started building my business. Um, I had planned to go out on my own after I had my third daughter or my third child, second daughter, um, and actually was laid off with most of my team in January of 2020. So I was five months pregnant and I was like, there's there's no way I'm going to get another job, right? Like not because I'm pregnant, although that probably wasn't really going to help. Like, let's be honest. Right. Um, nobody would say that they're not going to hire you because of that, but right. It's just because it's, it's illegal. doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Correct. Correct. So, <laughs> you know, we were like, we, we are close enough. We had been saving for a while. Um, we had kicked it into high gear when there were talks about, you know, a recession and, there were talks about budget cuts at my job for several months before I was laid off. And everybody knows the first place companies go to save money is the marketing department. So we had say, you know, we had saved, um, and we were in a good spot and decided to just kind of leap in and go for it. And I thought, you know, with all of my experience in corporate marketing, I could really help small businesses. I could help entrepreneurs, and show them how to create marketing plans that they could be really confident in. So you feel like they're wasting their money and just throwing things at the wall, hoping they were stick, not Mm -hmm. seeing the ROI that they deserved. And then with all of my experience in marketing management and creating a system to organize an entire team, I was like, I can teach them the tools and the tricks to make marketing efficient and effective for them. So it also doesn't monopolize all their time Mm -hmm. because there's like a million things to do as a business owner. Right. Right. So, you know, here, let me teach you all of these tools and these tricks that the pros use that no one's really talking about. And hopefully just make your lives a little bit easier and make you really confident in, in marketing. Yes. Oh my gosh. I so love that. I, I love marketing personally. I know so many people don't, but, (laughs) but let's talk marketing. Let's go into this. I know that a marketing strategy is a must. And I know Mm -hmm. that I work with my students on things like this all the time, but so many business owners fight back and they'll say, they're just going to post on Instagram Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. they're only going to work word of mouth instead of really looking at the bigger picture. Why would a business owner need a marketing strategy? What does it actually do for us in the big picture. Yeah. In the big picture, 
a marketing strategy, this is going to sound really obvious when I say it, but it makes you more strategic, right? Yes. Like you, you have to kind of align your strategies with your business goals. So when you, when you say like, Hey, I'm just going to work on, and I've got friends who have done this or I'm like, please, can I, please, can I work with you? Like I have so many ideas and they're like, uh, you know, I'm just going to stick to posting on Instagram. I'm mm. really comfortable there. So there's a couple of things. So first of all, when you put all of your eggs in one basket, what happens when yes. that basket isn't filling up with those eggs, that mm -hmm. is a problem. Then you're left scrambling. And when you're scrambling, you're not being strategic about how you're growing your business and being, putting a plan together and understanding the marketing strategies that you want to use and having well-rounded marketing strategies that put you in a lot of different channels means that you can really align your marketing efforts to your business goals. Yes. A lot of times I see, um, businesses of any size. This isn't like just small businesses or just entrepreneurs. It happens in large organizations too, where they sort of like separate their business operations and goals mm -hmm. from their marketing. And at the end of the day, like your marketing is there to move the needle for your business. So if you don't have a strategy in place, you're probably not moving that needle. So whether it's brand awareness, whether it is revenue, increasing your revenue, um, you name it, whatever that goal is, that's going to grow or scale your business. If you're marketing, if you don't have a strategy, you're not, how are you growing your business? How are you meeting right. that goal? They go hand in hand. Yes, they do. Oh my gosh. Yes. For anyone that has never really looked at that big picture strategy, mm -hmm. how can they start to really build one for their own business? What does that look like for them? So it's actually, it is not as hard as it sounds to build a marketing plan. And I know that sounds crazy because I teach people and I work with clients on creating marketing plans, but and the simplest way to start is to look at your three to five year plan for your business. Where do you need to be in three to five years? What does that look like for you? And that really, it can be anything. Okay. It could be, um, I'll use myself as an example in three to five years. I want to be at a point where I have replaced or exceeded my previous salary. Mm -hmm. Right. So it could be, um, when I was at the credit union, the mortgage department, for example, their three to five year goal was to change, to flip flop the makeup of their loan portfolio from mostly refinances to purchases. So your three to five year goal, what does that look like? Where do you need to be or want to be in your business? Yes. Okay. That's step one. Step two is, um, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back. Step one is knowing who you, who your target audience is. Yes. <laughs> so step one, know your target audience. Step two, set that, that three to five year goal. And then the next step, step three, you want to create a 12 month objective. So something, a smart goal, something, um, that you can measure is attainable, um, follows that smart format and that, it's quantifiable for the next 12 months. What are you going to do? Is that going to um, be using myself as an example again? Here, here's the amount of revenue I need to make this year so that in three to five years, I'm at the point where I've exceeded my previous salary. Yes. So just what do the next 12 months need to look like, right? So you've got three to five years. And then we're going to focus in and say like, what do the next 12 months need to look like? And yes. then you start putting your strategies together and saying, what are the, the actual marketing things, the marketing strategies I'm going to do? Am I going to do podcast um, guest episodes? Am I going to focus on social media? Is that going to be something I do? Am I going to launch a course? Um, am I going to go to a certain number of networking events, right? This can be anything. Like the world yes. is your oyster when it comes to how you're going to market your, your business. You just have to know what you're going to do. And you know, if it fits in your budget, like what, mm -hmm. what dollars do you have available? If I can't afford to, um, buy the software, if I want to buy software to launch a course, but I can't afford to do that. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should reprioritize my marketing strategies. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Set that three to five year goal, 
get your 12 months, your next 12 months kind of narrowed in and focused, and then start mapping out those strategies. And, and then underneath those bullet point out what you need to do to make those happen. Yes. Do you want to launch a course? What, what are the things that have to happen? You have to do mm-hmm. some market research. You have to draft the course, outline the course, and then start putting some deadlines to it. So you keep yourself yes. on track. It's all about making it actionable at the end of the day. So getting those strategies and those tactics with some deadlines in there for yourself and, and timelining it out, that's where you start to see the progress. I know that for so many of my students, they get overwhelmed with all of the possibilities, which is very easy to do. And so what I have started suggesting is choose something that you want to promote every single month. Mm -hmm. and stick with that (laughs) yeah. (laughs) because then that aligns all of your marketing stuff. Just like you said, then start making those bullet lists, right. Of what needs to be done because you know what you're working towards for the month. Yeah. That's really, that's smart advice. And I think, um, you know, as, and, and this happens a lot. I see this with coaches, myself included. Sometimes I have to remember like, I'm a marketer and I enjoy doing the marketing things and I know how to do the marketing things. But when it comes to like clients and things like that, do, do what you have the capacity for, right? Like don't overextend yourself one thing a month. That's perfect. Like align your strategies with that. So if you're going to promote, um, maybe a webinar or something, if you Mm -hmm. like to host webinars or maybe you have, um, like a little ebook or something that you've put together. Um, maybe you are a sales coach or, um, I I don't know, maybe you, maybe you brew tea and you're going to teach other people how to brew tea. I don't know. (laughs) Um, you know, whatever it is, that's perfect. Pick that one thing and focus on it. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to overcomplicate it and feel like you have to do a ton of stuff that is just going to sap your energy and like leave you no time to do like the rest of your business because Absolutely. there's still tons of stuff to get done. Yes. I love that. I think that so many people, myself included, get overwhelmed and then we just do nothing yes. and that doesn't yes. serve anyone. And the other thing too, that I always tell my clients is like, play to your strengths. So I, I don't love doing social media. Like I, I do it because I think it's a a very necessary component, um, of creating a presence online for small businesses and entrepreneurs. But like, that's not my jam. I don't even personally, I don't love necessarily spending a ton of time on social media. Um, so the things I do love doing though, are talking to people Mm -hmm. and teaching them. So I, I host a podcast, I go on podcasts, I host workshops, and those are also ways that I'm promoting my business and that I'm marketing my business. So Mm -hmm. play to your strengths and the things you like doing. If you do love social media, great, like map out a plan and figure out how you're going to spend your time on, on social media. If you But if you don't, like there's plenty of other ways you can do it. Right. For anyone listening that is on board and they're like, yes, I'm ready to start marketing. (laughs) And then they sit down and they're like, shit, sorry, I swear. Uh, No, you're fine. (laughs) Where do I go now? How can they build this strategy into something that is extremely manageable? I know we talked about breaking it down to three to five years and then the 12 month and then from there, but there's so many options for marketing and you said play to their strengths. What are some of the different things that you've seen people implement successfully? I, um, so I always recommend starting with like the free stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's, everybody loves a free 99 price tag. Like, right? So get kind of your basics in place, get get your social media set up, um, get things like a Google, my business so that you can ask for referrals and testimonials and people can plug them in to Google. So when someone is searching for your product or your service, you're popping up, um, look for opportunities to partner with other people. Um, so 
if you, you're like, I just, I don't know where to start. And I'm starting at zero. Like that's where everyone starts first of Mm -hmm. all. So you shouldn't feel bad about starting at zero. Right. Right. But get some of those free things, your social media, your Google, my business, Mm -hmm. um, put a website together, even if you do it yourself and it's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. It just has to kind of tell your story and explain what you've got to offer so that your target audience can, can see it. And you have somewhere to drive traffic that isn't just your social media channels. Um, you know, get those things in place, but even if that seems overwhelming, pick one thing pick one thing. So if that's going to be getting, um, your social media channels set up, get your social media channels up and ready, and then look for a social media scheduler. There's tons of tools out there that are free or super inexpensive, like 10 bucks a month that like you could sit down once a month or once a week and plug your content into and schedule it. And then it just posts automatically for you. Yeah. Like, so you don't even have to worry about it. It's right. Life. <laughs> like, yeah. And it doesn't. So, so worth it. yeah. So start, start in the places, start in kind of the obvious places where, where can someone, where's your ideal audience going to look for you? Mm-hmm. Cause if you're going to focus on one thing, right. If you're going to, if you're going to say, I don't have time or I'm like too overwhelmed to do all the things think about who your ideal customer is, your target audience and way where they would go to find you and start there. Right. Because you gotta, you gotta get in front of them to make yes. sales. Right. And, and so, you know, if your if your ideal client or customer um, logs on to Instagram first thing in the morning, but you are over on LinkedIn, like there's a huge (laughs) disconnect, right? And they can't find you. And then you're like, well, I'm hearing crickets. Like no one is coming. So where do they go? How would you start looking for your service and start there? Right. Just just pick one thing to start on. And then as you get comfortable, you can add, add things in. And those baby steps make everything so much easier. For sure. For sure. Like nobody, nobody goes into their own business on day one with everything built. If they're telling you that it was like their empire was built and perfect out of the gate, they're probably lying to you. Right. (laughs) Right. Like they, everybody goes in phases, you know, even, even a year and some change into my business. Like I'm still doing work on my website. I'm still changing things. I am still never ending. It's never ending. It really isn't. (laughs) So it's never, it's never gonna, it's never gonna end. So you're never going to start if you're waiting for that. So pick the one thing, where does your audience show up and then meet them there? Yes. I love marketing. I don't even know why, but I do probably because mm-hmm. I like to talk. It's awesome. I know it's so much fun, <laughs> but so many business owners do not. And they freak out at even the yeah. thought of it. And what's funny when I watch this though, is that when they start to become more adept at it and dare mm-hmm. I say, even enjoying it yes. um, is when they really have confidence in what they're doing And when they discover how to properly convey what it is that they do, we hear all the time. I feel like it's the buzzword right now, be authentic. Mm -hmm. And while I agree completely, I feel like so many people don't share what that really looks like. How can a business owner really nail that messaging to be authentic in their brand? Yes. So this is something that even as the owner of a company called Authentic Branding and Marketing, (laughs) you know, I still have to work on because it requires this level of vulnerability Mm -hmm. that is sometimes really hard to get past, especially like I am a pretty private person. So I don't, you know, it's hard to kind of get past this. And I, I recently got some really great advice actually from a guest on my podcast. His name is Mike Isla Melly. And he was like, identify like six emotions that you really identify with and then map out or kind of jot down like how those six emotions like show up in your 
in your business. Um, so for me, I, I like to, I like my clients to feel very confident in their marketing. Mm -hmm. Um, likewise, I'm very confident in, in my marketing. So I, I look at that list kind of on a regular basis and I say, how can I share something that relates to one of these emotions? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I don't share a ton about my personal life. Um, you know, I kind of pick and choose, but I'm never going to be one who like splashes my kids across my social media channels. Um, or like, I don't know, snapshots every living moment of my life and then post it to my business channels. But I show up authentically in other ways. Like Mm -hmm. I am really passionate about marketing and that education, that um, empowerment that I like other people to feel, that was one of the words that really resonated with me was empowerment. I find ways to empower my audience. So Mm -hmm. for me, that's knowledge. And so look for ways that feel good to you. So if it doesn't feel good to you, it's not going to come across authentically to your audience. Mm -hmm. So like just nix that right out of the gate. Like I tried sharing pictures of my kids and I was like, (laughs) this doesn't, I just hate this. Like I don't love it. I stopped doing it. Yep. But I really liked that advice and it's something that I started following and it's really changed the game for me. Like find those like six emotions that really resonate with either how you feel about your business or how you want your clients and customers to feel about your business and then create messages and content based on those feelings because that's going to be very genuine, right? That's how you're going. That's where you can't fake that stuff, right? Yes. So I love, I heard Sarah Blakely say yesterday, um, something about what are her filters for Instagram? She goes, I didn't want to get on Instagram. Everyone told me I should be on there. Mm. So I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in a way that feels good to me. So what are my filters? And I'm so sorry. I can't remember all of them. It was uh, a book launch yesterday, but I really (laughs) loved thinking about it from that perspective. And it's kind of the same thing with the emotions, right? Of what are the filters that I want to put all of my information through because they're so integral to my brand. Yeah. Absolutely. I, another thing I'm a, I'm a big fan of. So I took the, the six emotions concept and I'm a big fan of creating key messages. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not like pretty much any marketer is going to talk about key messages. So that's like not revolutionary, but, um, I took those like six emotions and then I started creating like some key messages, which are just like, I, they're, I don't know. It sounds super obvious to me, but they're, they're like the points that you want to make on Mm -hmm. social media and, or in any of your marketing really. And I just, I created those and I really, I use those as a way to just like pull things off the shelf and get it out there because they're very, because they are very true to like how I feel about my business. Mm -hmm. Um, they genuine, they generally come off as being pretty genuine and authentic, or at least I hope so. If not, if not, I hope somebody would be like, this sounds weird. But at the end of the day too, I mean, just use your gut. Like if it doesn't feel good to you because you're trying to copy somebody else, or you are trying to put a persona in place, Yes. Like it's, it's not going to come up. It's not going to feel authentic to you. And the moment you don't feel authentic, it reads as disingenuous to your, to your audience. Yes, And they're like, they might not know why. Right. But it's going to be like this subconscious, like something is weird here. And I don't know if I trust this person. Like it dilutes what makes you special. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it kind of makes other people put their guard up and go like, Ooh, yes. like slimy salesman alert. What, mm. what is this person going to try to sell me that I don't need? Yes. And they're, they're not going to be able to like recognize why, mm-hmm. but it's, it's most likely going to tie back to the fact that like, you don't feel good about whatever it is you're doing. Yep. And so it just, it's going to read disingenuous. Yes. You can't fake it. <laughs> I love that. I I think that it takes time too, right? Like what you know now for your business and what you really want to convey right now might be different even in six months. Absolutely. Having the, uh, giving yourself the permission 
to be flexible in that is so important because I know my work has changed. I've been a boudoir photographer for 12 years now and I've been a teacher for five and my messages have changed consistently and I've been in business for a long time. So it's so important to allow yourself to grow and change. Even if people latch onto something, it's okay to let it evolve. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's going to, it's going to happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And the more you fight it, the less authentic you're going to feel, right? Like I went through, I went through that recently. I was like, I knew I needed to make a target audience change. And I've been like holding out on it Mm -hmm. and everything I started to do more and more felt like it was it was not really me. It wasn't very authentic because I knew I was kind of like holding back and not being very, um, true to Mm -hmm. some of those feelings and some of the, the key points that I knew I needed to make. Yes. And you can, you can tell. So like that, that evolution is going to happen. Everybody goes through it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love this conversation. Marketing is like near and dear to my heart. It's so funny when I look back on my jobs that I've had throughout my life, they've all been things that have kind of prepared me for where I'm at. So travel and marketing and uh, customer service and tech and all of these things. So it's amazing to see that growth. I know that you are a mom of three. Yes. And even for the listeners who are not parents, cause we do have some that are not parents. Yeah. We are all juggling sure. something. Yep. Right. Like yep. family, friends, life, kids, Absolutely. maybe a day job on, on top of our businesses. So there's so many things. Do yeah. you believe that work-life balance is attainable or do you think it's a myth and just something that we have to accept that there are certain seasons? Hmm. I, Maybe I am just unwilling to accept that there are seasons, like certainly there are moments, right? Mm -hmm. There are moments where it's not going to feel balanced. Like you're going to work a little bit later on any given night, like on a given night than maybe you want to. But I always, I really do believe that there is harmony that can be achieved. I don't think it's ever going to be like perfectly, like perfectly balanced. That's a good word for it. Yes. Yes. I don't think it's ever going to be perfectly balanced, right? Mm -hmm. Because like on, on Monday, I might have to stay an hour late for a meeting with Mm -hmm. a client, stay an hour late. Like I leave my office, (laughs) my office is at my home, but like, you know, I'm logged on and I'm working an hour later than like I like to be typically. Mm -hmm. Cause I need to meet a client. Um, but the next day or maybe Friday, I'm going to clock out and like leave my desk and my work behind at two o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm not going to look yes. back. You know what I'm like? Yes. So I think there is harmony that can be achieved. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just kind of giving yourself the grace to know that like, if you're trying to seek like a one-to-one balance, mm-hmm. I don't think like you're ever going to get there. And I think you're going to be, I think you're going to stress yourself out trying yes. to like, you know, hour for hour. Yes. I think it's more about looking for that harmony and going, okay, well, if I have to, if I have to stay late or maybe I've got a really busy two weeks with a big project I need to get done. Mm-hmm. Then after that two weeks, I'm going to make an effort and I am going to hold myself accountable to to, you know, maybe working less than I typically would yes, so that I can, you know, I can kind of come back to that center and come back to a place where I feel really good about both of those things. Yes. And I, I actually asked that with, uh, the marketing plan in mind, because we have to look at the big picture of not Mm -hmm. just our business, but our entire life, because ultimately our business should fit into our lives, not the other way around. Right. Yes. Yes. And so chances are you went into business because you love what you do, whether it's like Mm -hmm. providing a service or a product and marketing is another piece of it. So how are we going to fit that into our lives so that we're not working all the time? Right. Um, so that's where all of the tools 
and like the mm-hmm. tricks that professional marketers use, um, come in handy. So I mentioned, you know, if you're doing social media, if that's going to be your thing, um, look for a social media scheduler. So you don't have to, yes. you're not like living by a reminder on your phone every single day to like post yes. something. Um, those again can be free. They can mm-hmm. be really inexpensive and they automate, everything, everything on your social media. So all you have to do is kind of keep an eye on the comments and like pop in and respond to, to a comment or a DM or something like that. Um, same thing. I'm a big fan of batching your work. So, um, that is a game changer, especially if you're looking, especially if you're looking for that harmony, right? That's Mm -hmm. where I feel like that harmony really comes into play. Like I'm going to have a long day of batching, um, my content and like my podcast or something at the beginning of the month, but then like Mm -hmm. I it's done and it's out of my hands and it's taken care of. Um, So look for opportunities to batch it, use an organization tool. I'm a huge fan of Trello. It's free. It's like the easiest thing to use Mm -hmm. and that can kind of keep you on a schedule. So you can see like where you're spending your time. You can plan for, um, those big projects so that you aren't being bombarded at the last minute going like, oh my gosh, I committed to, um, I don't know, I committed to doing some Instagram videos or a presentation with somebody and like, it's two days before now I have to prep for it Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be here late and it's going to stress me out. Yep. If you use an organization tool, you can see it coming up and you can plan for it. And so you can work on it a little bit at a time, um, scheduling anything you can schedule ahead of time schedule ahead of time, your emails, you yes. schedule emails ahead of time. Yes. <laughs> um, so batch the, I mean like batch anything that you can and schedule anything that is possible for you. Um, there's tools like Zapier that can do tasks and things for you. That, that like, is so powerful. Up. Um, I need to be better about it. I set it up for a client, but I honestly haven't used it for myself. And I think I need to like look harder at it. I tried and I sat down and I was like, holy shit, this does so much that I just can't do this right now. And then of course I forget. So that was the impression I got. (laughs) <laughs> that's yes. the impression when I set it up for my client, I was like, wow, there's, there's really a lot here. And I don't know if I understand how to like make it all work for me in a time period. That's like, realistic for me. Um, but you know, look for, look for those tools. What are some other tools that I am a big fan of? Um, I am a big fan of using, I have, I, you know, I could not get into Asana. I've used it and I, I feel like there are a ton of people who like love it. And I was like, how am I not figuring this out? It was just like, not in reason. And then I like, I love Asana over Trello is because it will do the the list like Trello does mm-hmm. so you can drag stuff, but it will also do an itemized list. Mm-hmm. So it has both. Whereas Trello does not, mm-hmm. which is what I, 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 I kind of want both. I'm a, right. Right. No, that totally see how sense. I feel kind of girl. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, other tools. I'm a huge fan of, I use Slack a ton. Um, yes. even as somebody like solo in my own business without a team, I use it and I coordinate like vendors and things. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, my website developer who helps me with my website and he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> so, um, it works out. It's like a text chain really, but, um, I use it to communicate with my clients. I use it to communicate with vendors that I'm hiring to do my work, my website developer, my SEO person, my social media person, because it keeps everything out of my email and it just kind of consolidates everything there. I use Trello. You could use Asana in much the same way. You can Mm -hmm. organize your vendors there. So look for places to where you can like consolidate that communication and keep Mm -hmm. it like out of your email, out of your texts, because that's where stuff gets lost, right? Like that's a graveyard of like anything that needs to happen (laughs) is is your email or your text messages. Um, and then truly, honestly, I, I use an old school, like an actual planner, like 
I, I set, so once I've got my like year goals, I mm-hmm. set quarterly goals mm-hmm. and I, like I break them down into quarters mm-hmm. and, um, then I break them down into months and then that's how they get, I I'm like next level, probably a little like OCD about organizing things, but Um, I use this model and I love it. (laughs) Yes. I mean, truly like it works for me because if I'm not, if I'm not doing those things, I am, I am not getting like, I'm not keeping myself organized. Yeah. And this is actually based on a model that I learned in the corporate world. It's called the traction method. Mm -hmm. And it basically like you set these, um, you set these year long goals, you break them down into quarters or what they call rocks. Um, and then you're responsible for figuring out like how you get that rock done. And basically like, these are the, these are the things that are going to move the needle for your business. And so I, I take those things, I break them down into quarters. And then on a Mm -hmm. daily basis, I'm just like, what do I need to get done today? Like I'm looking at what I have mapped out in Trello and I time block it on a Mm -hmm. physical piece of paper. And then I like, I try to stick to it. Like try is a very key word there, (laughs) but I think if you're looking to kind of keep yourself organized, so back to like your original question, like Mm -hmm. look for ways to batch, look for tools that are going to automate for you. And then like time, time block your days Mm -hmm. so that you know what you need to get done and you're, you're sticking to it and holding yourself to it. Oh, I just started doing that. I, I rebelled against that for so long, especially as an artist and a creative. I'm like, I'm a free spirit. I want to do what I want to do. And I do still feel that, but blocking off my day has given me so much freedom to be done when I'm done. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's a huge, it's a huge thing. When I, when I think about like finding that harmony, that's that time blocking plays a big part in it. Right. Because when I block out my days and I go, you know, and I don't, I don't necessarily, when I was in the corporate world, I had to like be pretty rigid. Cause a lot of times, Mm -hmm. like those blocks were meetings that other people needed me to be at, um, you know, as, as an entrepreneur and somebody who like, doesn't answer to anyone (laughs) except myself, I can be a little bit more like free, you Mm -hmm. know, a little less rigid and say, if I want an extra 30 minutes, because I'm really in the zone on something, like I can give myself that without being like, Oh, nope. You said at 10 o'clock, you're going to switch over to your email. Um, but when I think about that harmony, like that time blocking is what allows me to go like, okay, if I can just get these things done today, then I'm not going to feel bad about turning my computer off at three o'clock when my kids get home from school or about not turning it on at all on Friday Mm -hmm. because I'm going to go to the park and I'm going to do whatever it is that I want to do. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a give and take and sometimes the creative flow just takes over and it, it does matter anyway. <laughs> it does. It's so true. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much to all of the listeners and business owners and photographers that have joined us. Thank you so much for listening today. I'm truly honored that you press play and spent this time with Caitlin and myself. If you, um, I'm so sorry, I'm jumbling around. Thank you so much for being here, Caitlin. (laughs) I'm glad we could connect for anyone listening that wants to learn more. Where can they find out more about what you offer and connect with you? Absolutely. So my social media handles are all at authentic branding. So you can find me on Facebook, um, Instagram, LinkedIn. I, um, my website is get authentic branding.com. Okay. Um, so anything there, um, I've got a resource page that I am really proud of. I actually did a lot of work on it in the past few months. Um, but there is a free resource bundle there. So if you need help getting started on your marketing, it comes with a sample marketing plan. So if you listen today and you're like, oh, that sounds really great. I'm never going to remember it. Um, <laughs> that is, is there for you. It comes with my favorite free marketing strategies that I like to, um, use right out of the gate. 
branding elements, the organization tools that I talked about, all that stuff is, is covered there. Um, and that is free to download. I've got, um, templates and things there. So my resources page, I'm just really proud of, um, spent a long time (laughs) working that out. And then I also host a podcast. It's called startup marketing. So you can find me there nerding out about pretty much anything related to marketing. (laughs) That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. If you are listening and you're someone that loves to help other people and you know, someone that needs this information, maybe they're struggling with marketing, they're overwhelmed in their business, please forward this episode over to them. I know how much Caitlin and I both would appreciate that. If you are thinking, wow, Brooke and Caitlin, this content was amazing. How can I thank you? I have a way you can thank me. (laughs) If you can head on over to iTunes and leave a review, I know it seems silly and small, but those reviews mean so much to us. It helps me know how I can better serve you. And it helps me get amazing guests like Caitlin. So if you hit pause now, go leave a review. You can screenshot your review before hitting submit and send it to hello at business straightup.com. I have a free thing for you freebie and it changes all the time. That's so so I, smart. I never actually say what it is because it changes all the time. So sometimes it's a free template. Sometimes it's shop credit. Sometimes, you know, we have all sorts of fun stuff, but I'm really excited for everyone listening to start to implement this. So thank you for being here. And for all my listeners, you didn't think I was going to let you get away without homework, right? Homework, action steps. Yes. I want you to set aside 15 minutes in your calendar this week. Yes. Don't wait. Yes. Actually schedule it in your calendar (laughs) to start walking through these steps so that you can implement a marketing plan Then come over to the community and share any ahas or takeaways. You can also tag me on Instagram if you'd like and join the community and Facebook group at businessstraightup.com slash community. Thank you so much for being here today, Caitlin. Do you have any words that you want to share or encouragement before we end today's episode? I will end with my favorite. That is be brave, not perfect. And wait, believe wait. in community. Okay, wait, I gotta write that down. <laughs> yes. Be brave, not perfect. I love that. Yes. It's from my favorite book by Res- Reshma Sajani. It's Girl to Code is the founder. Um, and it's the name of her book, Be Brave, Not Perfect. It will change your life. I love that. I've never heard of that book. I actually run boss book club and, um, we have a huge list of books that we want to get through and I've never heard that. So I will absolutely make a note of that for anyone listening, be brave, not perfect. I love that. We might have to, I make bracelets out of things, but I see them. So that might have to go on a bracelet. It is time for all my listeners, everyone listening to start stepping into that CEO role in your business to look at the bigger picture of your business and marketing so that you can grow and not only be profitable, but sustainable too. I cannot wait to see what you do with your business. You have the power to impact the world and I'm so excited to see what you do with it. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks Brooke, have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me today and listening in. You can find all of the show notes for this and every episode over at boldwithbrook.com slash podcast, where you can also find all of the links or resources mentioned. I can't wait to work with you. Have an amazing rest of your day.